We're here at Halliwell Jones Stadium, home of the famous Warrington Wolves. Gathered our 12 Saxons ready for battle over five grueling tests. Who will be England's strongest man 2023? We will soon see. Well, welcome to Halliwell Jones Stadium in Warrington, England, for another edition of England's Strongest Man. There's 12 athletes battling out. Let's meet them. Well, the first event today is the 187 kilogram Husserfeld Stone Carry. And it's simple, there's a 20 metre course. The athletes have to pick up that giant stone and carry it as far as they can going up and down the course. We saw Josh Norton in lane one. Alongside him is Jack Osborne in lane two. And this Ricky Daly, age 39, a whopping 180 kilograms. And the fourth man in this heat, Tom Place, age 25. So referee's whistle has gone and it's Jack Osborne who is off to an early lead. But it's not technically a race, it's about how far you can carry this huge object and the further you go, the heavier it gets and the more awkward it gets. You can see Osborne tentatively turning round. But it's Ricky Daly who now moves into the lead, followed closely by Tom Place as they both descend upon the 40 metre mark. Ah. Oh. And Ricky Daly just drops it, Tom Place turns and now makes his way back, looking to try and squeak out 60 metres if he can. Josh Norton, 40 metres, drops just afterwards. Looked a bit dizzy, oh, and Tom Place, I think, just about got to the 60 metre mark, meaning he is the winner of the first heat. And that will surprise some. This, his first appearance at England's Strongest Man. Well, moving on now to the second heat, Phil Hawkswell in lane one, his first time here, a UK strongest man. But it's not this man's, it's the reigning champion, Paul Smith, two times champion and current UK strongest man. Andrew Flynn, another one of the favourites here today, he'll be sure to perform well. And Patrick Haynes, or Paddy Haynes as he's known, age 26, his first time, big things expected from him here. Well, it's Paddy Haynes in the far side there who takes the early lead just ahead of Paul Smith. Very smooth and steady from Haynes as he turns nicely, heads back down, going towards 40 metres. Paul Smith yet to get to the 20 metre mark. Andy Flynn just turning now, following close behind, but Paul Smith looks like he's in all sorts of trouble and that's not what he's going to want. He's really struggling to get that huge stone back up and he drops it, having done just over 20 metres and Paddy Haynes now at 60 metres and looking very, very strong indeed. Phil Hawkswell down, but Paddy Haynes, oh my word, 80 metres and he's still going. And you can see how the weight now is dropping lower and lower and lower. And what a performance from him. That is going to take some beating. That came out of nowhere. Paddy Haynes, welcome to England's strongest man. And Paul Smith can scarcely believe what's happened.
Well, on to the final heat and Joe Oliver, still only 21 years old, hard to believe. He's been on the circuit for a couple of years now. Lewis Packham, the world's strongest barber, age 30 alongside him. And then Sam Ashton in lane three. Completing the quartet, Max Searby, just 22 years old, another newcomer. There's lots of new faces here today at England's Strongest Man, which is great to see. It shows how robust the strongman scene is in England. Well, it's Max Searby who looks like he's got the slight edge over Lewis Packham as they hit the first 20 metre stretch of this course. Lewis Packham just behind Max Searby, Joe Oliver going a little bit slowly there as he just turns and finishes his first 20 metre run. But at the moment, it's Lewis Packham and Max Searby who are pretty much neck and neck. Lewis Packham just looks over at Searby to see what he's doing. And Packham now has really started to pick up a head of steam here. Oh, he's getting into trouble all of a sudden and drops it. And Max Searby, I'm wondering whether he's just managed to eke out a metre or two over Lewis Packham. And Joe Oliver, well, I thought he was going to try and get it back up there. He drops it around 40 metres. So nobody coming close to what Paddy Haynes did. But that's about the best event I could hope for, really. Brilliant start, fairly clear as well, so I just went out and did all I could and very happy. We've all got bad events, but it's about damage limitation on those bad events and it's not a great start for Paul, but there's still a lot to play for. There is indeed, but it's Paddy Haynes who picks up the maximum 12 points in the Husserfeld Stone Carry ahead of Andy Flynn in second, Tom Place in third. And down at the bottom, last place, Paul Smith. What a disastrous start for the reigning champion. Well, now moving on to the second of five events, it's this huge giant tyre super yoke and Paul Smith, who finds himself at the bottom of the table, has got it all to do. It's 350 kilograms. It has to be carried up the course 20 metres. They drop it, they turn around and then they go back another 20 metres. So it's 40 metres in total, a 75 second time limit. So Paul Smith will really be looking to make amends here, but at the moment it's Jack Osborne who is now edging in front. And the problem with doing this on grass is it's so heavy, your feet can sink in. It is the height of summer, so the ground will be a little bit dry, but it's Jack Osborne who gets away second, and Paul Smith once again finds himself trailing. Jack Osborne going very well indeed, and Paul Smith is finding himself in all sorts of trouble. He just hasn't got the form today. Osborne hits the buzzer and beats Smith in the first heat. It's so surprising because Paul Smith is definitely one of the more consistent athletes out there. And you can only assume it's been a tough year for him, having won UK Strongest Man for a second time. Perhaps this, at the end of the season, is just a step too far for a competitor who normally is so strong. But he's not giving up, he's still going for it, just trying to edge it forward, and he's going to run out of time. 75 seconds, just five seconds left, is he going to cross it? Not sure that he did. I'm not sure that he did. We'll have to wait for the official results there. And it's that perplexed look once again from Smith. He really just can't believe what's happened to him today. So on to the next heat. Josh Norton currently ninth with four points after one event. He'll be disappointed with that. Ricky Daly alongside him currently 10th out of the 12 athletes. So both athletes set, get that huge weight onto the shoulders and it looks painful, doesn't it? 350 kilograms, all going through a bit of metal across your shoulder blades. Must be excruciating. I'm sure they're thinking this can't be over soon enough. Ricky Daly just taking a small drop there and once again dropping it, so it's really started to take its toll on him as Josh Norton crosses the first part of the course, 20 metres done in around 26 seconds, and it's Norton who is away first. 
just look at the steps, you can see how much weight is going through their legs with every step they take. It's like walking through mud. But it's nice and steady by Norton. He's not trying to rush it. If you rush it, you can get out of control and it becomes very, very difficult indeed. 20 seconds left for Norton to complete the course. Ricky Daly starting to come back, but once again just dropped it as Norton continues that slow trudge towards the finish line. And Ricky Daly now starting to close on him. Oh no, I think he's had enough. He's had enough and the whistle has gone. Neither man completing the course. Well, Joe Oliver currently eighth. It's still early in this competition. A lot can change. Up against Phil Hawkswell, currently seventh. Great crowd here today, incidentally. Around 2,000 people have come to this, which is normally a rugby league stadium. It's a fantastic stadium in Warrington in the north of England. And Joe Oliver, head down, just taking nice small steps. And not much separated them. It's Hawkswell who's got the slight edge over Oliver, it would appear, as they get to the first phase, the transition phase, as Hawkswell turns, Oliver just behind. Oh, and Oliver didn't manage to cross the line, so that's just cost him valuable seconds as he sees Phil Hawkswell start to move off into the distance. 40 seconds gone. Looks like this could be a very good time for Hawkswell if he can complete the course. And he's going very well indeed. Look at this. He's going to set a fantastic time. Just drops it before the line. Just needs to reset. Oh, Joe Oliver in all sorts of trouble. Not sure what happened there. He just sort of leant across, but Phil Hawkswell just needs to dig deep now. Get across that finish line, which he is going to do. He's got to hit the buzzer. And one minute six or thereabouts for Phil Hawkswell. But Joe Oliver, unfortunately, is not going to complete the 40 metres. He looks absolutely exhausted. So Sam Ashton had a good run out in the first event, getting seven points for that alongside Lewis Packham. Packham, I would fancy, would be the favourite. He's a brilliant strong man and especially very good at overhead press. But this event so far has been full of surprises, especially when it comes to the reigning champion, Paul Smith. He's had a disastrous start over the first two events. And Packham actually looks like he's really struggling here. Sam Ashton on the left of your screen with the white yoke has just got the edge and Packham had started to close then as he gained a bit of momentum but it all went wrong, had to drop it. And now Ashton starting to make his way down for that final 20 metres. Looks to me like the yoke is dragging a bit at the back and that makes things perhaps a little bit more difficult. It's like applying the brakes. You've got to try and keep it level. Packham having the same thing, it's dropping to the right hand side which just makes things a little bit more difficult but now he's got it up, I think he's working this one out now, oh he dropped it and now it's becoming a real race where they're both trying to grind their way towards that finish line, literally nothing separating them, Ashton gets himself set, moves forward once again and Packham looks like he's just going to take the edge. And once again, it just topples forward. And that's the problem with this event. You go too fast, you lose control. On to the next heat, Max Searby. A brilliant performance, first time round, fourth place. Up against Tom Place, who looks really fired up here today. So both athletes off to a pretty decent start, neck and neck, look at this, nothing separating them. Nice short steps from Searby, just trying to get control of that super yoke and you can see how it's dragging there for Tom Place at the back. He's trying to fight that balance which is so difficult. Well, Tom Place is the first one to get off and running for the final 20 metres. Max Searby, again, slow but steady. And now he's going to move out in front 
Just coming up to the 40-second marker. Is he going to drop it or is he just going to dig deep and try and go the whole way? Well, the whole way he's not going to go. And as we've seen before in other heats, it's one man drops, the other moves forward, then he drops, the other one moves forward. Go on, Max. Get to that 40-metre marker. So close. And he's going to do it in just over a minute. Or is he? No, he's been told by the referee. He's just got to clear it a little bit further. Hits the buzzer in around one minute, seven seconds. Another really, really good performance by Max Searby. That will put him right up the leaderboard, I would imagine. Oh, dear. Another hard day at the office. Well, Andy Flynn, is this your time? He's come so close in the past. Can he put in another solid performance here to give himself a shot at the England Strongest Man title, which has eluded him for the last three years? Alongside him, Paddy Haynes. Again, we don't know too much about him, except his performance in the Husserfeld Stone in the first event was absolutely phenomenal. And this is going to be some contest between these two. There's millimetres between them. Andy Flynn's so experienced in this, and you can see... Paddy Haynes just struggling a bit with the balance, but again, he's very, very close to Andy Flynn. Andy Flynn gets away first. The question is, can Andy Flynn keep going? Was he going to drop it and leave an opening for Paddy Haynes? It doesn't look it. Look at Andy Flynn go. 31, 32 seconds. Hits the buzzer, but I think he was just outside the time set by Jack Osborne, which was just under 34 seconds. I think that's going to be second overall for Andy Flynn. A great performance from him, but it's Jack Osborne who takes the win. Went for it, like first pickup, and I tried going quick with it, but as soon as I felt fighting back, I knew I just had to take my time with it, and just one step at a time, make sure I finish it without any drops. Well, but it's good to win that event to bring me back up within contention of the podium. Well, there you have it, very little splitting them. It's Jack Osborne who just scrapes the win over Andy Flynn, and Paddy Haynes in third. Another good performance from him. Paul Smith just managing sixth place there. And at the lower end of the table, it's Josh Norton in seventh, Sam Ashton in eighth, and Joe Oliver down in twelfth. Well, on the overall leaderboard, Andy Flynn is tied first place with Paddy Haynes and Max Searby five points behind them. It's starting to look like a two-horse battle. And Paul Smith, it's not often you can say you see him down there, tenth place. We're now moving on to the third event, and it's the Kratos Bar deadlift for reps, 320 kilograms. Joe Oliver going up against Tom Place. Oliver on your left, Place on your right. So the referee's whistle goes, and this is about slow and steady wins the race. There's plenty of time, and sometimes a good strategy is to knock out three, four reps, take a breather, get your strength back, and then try and hit a batch more, rather than trying to do everything at once and fatiguing yourself so much that you can't continue. So four repetitions apiece, both men taking a breather. But for me, Tom Place looked like he struggled on that fourth repetition. And you can see going for the fifth, and he's hit that brick wall and already is out after just 30 seconds. So now the door is open for Joe Oliver to try and get some more repetitions, put something on the board. And he's really fighting this one as he looks to lock out and look at the bend on the bar, such is the weight, 320 kilograms. And Joe Oliver virtually passing out after that effort. And I suspect that'll be all from him. Yep, I think he's had enough. I think he knows that there's nothing left in the tank. So it's five reps for Joe Oliver, besting Tom Place by one repetition. Well, Lewis Packham will be disappointed with his performance so far. He'll be looking to do something special here if he's going to have any chance of trying to get a podium place up against Ricky Daly. So Packham, his feet slightly closer together than Daly, a slightly different technique, and Daly really having to work hard to get that first rep up. 
But Packham looking strong so far. 15 seconds gone, he's already done four repetitions. Again, four seems to be the magic number, doesn't it? When they just take a breather. Going well, I think he'd be well advised to take a rest, which is exactly what he's doing. He's got plenty of time. If he can take 10, 15 seconds rest, he might just have strength to get two, three more repetitions and make it that bit more difficult for the rest of the field who've yet to come. But for Daly, one repetition is all it is. So Packham set. Only around 20 seconds left on the clock. No. I thought he'd better get two or three more, and he didn't. So it's five repetitions for Lewis Packham, tied first in this event. So Sam Ashton currently joins sixth with 12 points. And Josh Norton, ninth overall. I th would it be expecting big things from Josh Norton here? Oh, I tell you what, Norton not even getting it off the ground yet. This is a surprise, an absolute surprise. I've seen Norton before this year. He's been so strong across all disciplines, and for him to fail to get a repetition is a huge shock. Going into this tournament, I would have expected Norton to be certainly a top four athlete here. That's not going to happen today. It's going to be zero points for him for failing to get a single repetition. Meanwhile, Ashton stuck on just the one. Just trying to get himself psyched up, but no, he couldn't get his back straight. He was hunched over, and that's a sure sign you're not going to make the lift. So one to Ashton, and zero to Josh Norton. Now, if you're a betting man, you would have Paul Smith down as the man who's going to win this event and win it he must if he's going to fight his way back into this competition. Max Searby, who's done so well today, surprising everybody, currently third. And Smith is normally meticulous in his preparation for these competitions. If there's an event he's never done before, he gets it made in the gym. He know, you know the right dimensions, the right weights. His preparation is normally exceptional. Smith looking steady, and look how close his feet are together. It could be so tempting to try and have a wide stance here, but Smith opting for a very very narrow stance and already he's on four repetitions he's going to go for one more gets the five that ties him in first place he's still got plenty of time now moves into the lead if he can squeeze this one up and it's time to take a breather ball i'll tell you what max Searby going well again five repetitions He's one to watch for the future, Max Searby, because he's having a phenomenal competition across all events and now looks to match Smith, and he does. And I think that's it. I think he knows that that's enough for some pretty decent points. Paul Smith not threatening him on the leaderboard at the moment, and Smith looking to make it seven, which he does. Oh, my word. Go on, Paul. Fight it up, and he does. Eight repetitions, Paul Smith is back. <laughs> oh, the crowd absolutely loving it. He needed that so much. Just for his head. I mean, he must have just been agonising over his performance so far. So, Phil Hawkswell, fourth place as things stand. Against the brilliant Paddy Haynes current joint leader alongside Andy Flynn who is yet to lift well then I've seen what Paul Smith did so eight is the target and a nice first lift from both athletes Paddy Haynes looking very very steady here oh four for Haynes look at this five it's not even taking a rest is he going to stop or is he going to keep going? 
This is absolutely incredible deadlifting by Paddy Haynes. Seven. <laughs> it looks to me like he's going to beat Paul Smith. He's taking a breather. He's still got just under a minute left as Paddy Haynes. Phil Hawkswell also going very well indeed. So Hawkswell getting set for his next round of lists. Paddy Haynes taking his time and he can afford to do that. He just needs really to get. Oh, well, that was a surprise. He went so strong. I was absolutely sure he was going to do that. So now, really, it's down to what the joint leader, Andy Flynn, can do. Alongside him, Jack Osborne. So Andy Flynn, he'll have seen what Paddy Haynes did. He'll be looking to better the seven reps set by Paddy Haynes, which will then put him at the top of the leaderboard. And Flynn is a very, very good deadlifter. And look at his form here, three already. That bar is a much bendier bar than a normal deadlift bar. So you can see it flexing. You just need to be a little bit more controlled on the lifts and already six for Flynn. Osborne still going well, fighting to get that fifth repetition. Flynn gets seven. This now to beat Paddy Haynes. Which he does, eight repetitions. One more to take the outright win. Osborne is out, Flynn fighting for nine. And he gets it, it's a win, it's maximum points for Andy Flynn. What a performance. 320 is a big old heavyweight, I haven't used a Kratos bar before. Um, so literally it was, see if everyone else does out there and beat it, simple as that. Yeah, it really was that easy, wasn't it, Andy? So Andy Flynn, nine repetitions, 12 points. Paul Smith is back with 11, and Paddy Haynes, consistent as ever, with 10 points. At the bottom of the leaderboard, well, Phil Hawkswell and Tom Place tied with four repetitions apiece. So what does that mean for the overall leaderboard here at England's Strongest Man? Well, it's Andy Flynn who now has a two-point lead over Paddy Haynes in second, Max Searby in third, and Paul Smith has hauled himself back up into fifth place. At the bottom end, Jack Osborne in seventh, Tom Place in eighth. Well, this is going to be very interesting indeed. It's a farmer's walk and it's only 50 kilograms in each hand, but it's an anvil, which makes it so awkward. There's no handle per se that you can get hold of. So four men going out at a time. It's Ricky Daly in lane one, Josh Norton in lane two, Sam Place in lane three, and Jack Osborne here in lane four. So you'll notice the instruments that they're carrying. They've got this sort of horn shape that they've got to grab. So it really is all about grip. And look at Sam Ashton go, absolutely flying down the course. And he just drops it before the end. Got to get to the 40 meter mark, hit the buzzer, which he does and takes the win. In what, just a little over 22 seconds. Josh Norton now fighting to get across the line. And it's second place for him in around 28, 29 seconds. But look at this, it's absolute carnage out there as they try to get the grip and the grip just gets, it starts failing. It's, it's heavy, 50 kilograms in each hand, but awkward. And that's what makes it so difficult. Jack Osborne really training in fourth place. Now he's getting to grips with it, but you can see it's just picking it up and dropping it, picking it up and dropping it. Josh Norton roaring on encouragement, trying to help Osborne get across the line. And he's gonna run out of time, is Osborne. Oh, he'll be so disappointed with this performance. Sometimes it's just down to the size of the hands. If you haven't got big hands, it's a really, really difficult event. So Tom Place heading up in lane one.
and the brilliant Phil Hawkswell, who's impressed so much today. Joe Oliver in lane three, currently 10th. And the world's strongest barber in lane four. Well, they're off, and it's Joe Oliver who's the early flyer. As he gets to the 20 metre mark relatively comfortably, turns round. And it's going to be Joe Oliver who's going to take a very, very convincing win in just over 13 seconds. Hits the buzzer. Phil Hawkswell just behind him. Got to reset that other one. It hadn't crossed the line. He hits the buzzer in 20 seconds, but Joe Oliver desperately needed that. But look at this. Lewis Packham in all sorts of difficulty. And you look at the grip, sometimes they've got their hands at the front, others have their hands at the back. They really just can't figure it out. <laughs> look at this, it's just, oh, it's such a tough one. Packham still going, just a few metres away from the line and just can't get the grip going. That right hand failing him. Look at it, it looks so awkward. Oh, he just gets across, <laughs> literally collapses, has forgotten to hit the buzzer. Joe Oliver telling him, hit the buzzer, but it's not happening. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Tom Place just finding it so difficult now. He's all over the place. Oh, the whistle's gone. Oh, he'll be glad to see the back of that event. Great performance from Joe Oliver. Well, can Max Searby close the gap on the two ahead of him? Paddy Haynes currently second with 32 points in lane two. And in lane three, it's Paul Smith who put in such a good showing in the deadlift and we'll be looking for another one here. And lastly, it's the current leader with 34 points, Andy Flynn. This is going to be a crucial moment in England's Strongest Man. And look at them all absolutely flying down the course. But look at this. It's Paddy Haynes in front who's just neck and neck with Andy Flynn as Paddy Haynes crosses the line. Paul Smith as well. They hit the buzzer. Did Paul Smith get it first? Or was it Paddy Haynes? It's an absolute dead heat. Andy Flynn dropped it. It's a photo finish. I could not work out who won that. It was so close. It looked like Paddy Haynes. Then it looked like Smith's Flames went off first. And I don't think either of them know who's won. Now, in the slow-mos, oh, it looked like it might. Yes, it was Paddy Haynes just ahead of Paul Smith. I was diving for the line. Paddy was diving the line. I thought he was ahead, but then he seemed to stumble before actually getting to the buzzer. So then I was obviously down to the referees, I saw faster time, but it seems like it's been overturned. It was so close. I mean, what a race. That's why I love this sport. Moments like that, it's just brilliant. Um, and I, I knew it was close. I thought I got him, but I'm glad it's uh, come out on top. Well, come out on top he did by just six one hundredths of a second. Haynes takes the win ahead of Paul Smith. But Andy Flynn, down in sixth, has dropped some valuable points. Well, the lower end of the table, Josh Norton takes seventh, and Max Searby, for the first time, finds himself down at the bottom of the rankings. Well, what does it mean for the leaderboard? It means that Paddy Haynes has now moved three points clear of Andy Flynn, with Max Searby still maintaining third, and Paul Smith is starting to move up the board in fourth, Sam Ashton in seventh, Lewis Packham down in eighth. Well, it's down to the final event and it's all to play for. Ricky Daly is up first alongside Josh Norton. It's the log ladder. And it's simple. There's five logs. The lightest one here, 100 kilograms. Then it goes up to 120, 140, 160. And the final log in the middle, the black log, 180 kilograms. They have to lean back, push it up cleanly, put it back down and move on to the next. So far, both athletes going well. Josh Norton now on the third log. 140 kilograms, he gets that up nicely. Moving on to the red, 160 kilograms. Ricky Daly just stuck here on the blue 140 log. And Josh Norton, 
He got it. I wasn't sure about that, but he did get it. He moves on to the 180. I've not seen many men press the 180 kilogram log. He's getting it up onto the chest. It's such a huge weight. Look at, look at the effort. And now it's the press. Ricky Daly going for 160. Josh Norton gets 180. That is an absolute world-class performance from the Warrington man who hits the buzzer. And there's not many men who've completed that. Now Ricky Daly moving on to 180. Can he replicate what Josh Norton just did? And I'll tell you what, the rest of the field, not many athletes are going to be able to lift that. So Tom Place up next. Up against Jack Osborne, 10th and 9th place respectively. Top place to the left, Josh Norton to the right. 100 kilograms done, moving on to 120. The white 120 kilogram log. And it's Place who is first to press. And onto the 140, which he gets. Jack Osborne just behind him. Now both moving on to the 160. The red 160. And Place pushes that up. Oh, and it looks easy for Osborne. And now neck and neck for the 180 kilogram log. Who's going to be first to press it, if at all? Josh Norton's time was 64.28 seconds, incidentally. So they've still got plenty of time to try and better that. What could Jack Osborne do here? This such an important lift. And he has locked out in just over a minute, a minute and one. Oh, what a performance by Jack Osborne. And what a great way to finish his innings at England's strongest man. And I think, I think he pipped Josh Norton's time. I'm pretty sure he did. Now, Lewis Packham is one of the best pressers in the country overhead. This slightly different. You are leaning back, different muscles to come into play, of course. But it should be an event that Lewis Packham will relish. Alongside him, Sam Ashton, who will be to the right. Oh, look at that. It's like there was no weight there at all for Lewis Packham. So 120, yep, nice and easy again for Packham as he moves on to the 140. Place just behind him. Oh, left arm collapsing there. He's not got the strength in the left arm. You can see he just can't lock it out. 140 for Packham, no problem as he moves on to 160. But unfortunately for Place, I think he has hit a brick wall and that's as far as he is going to go. So 160 for Lewis Packham, gets it up. Running out of time. I say that, he's got 20 seconds to do this 180 if he's going to uh, win. So now this will put him in front if he can successfully lift the 180. Ooh, looked like he dropped it on his face. That's not good. Place looking disgusted with himself, but I think Lewis Packham may have done himself an injury. It looked to me like he dropped it on his face. Oh, yes, he has. Look, blood. Yep, he's cut himself. That could be a broken nose, unfortunately, for Lewis Packham. The last thing he wanted, and that just would have thrown him out. You can see here, he lifts, and it's straight down. It didn't look like a heavy collision, but it's 180 kilograms onto the nose. Oh, that would have hurt. Well, Joe Oliver would have seen what happened to Lewis Packham, and I'm sure he's thinking, I hope it doesn't happen to me. And Phil Hawkswell, a very respectable fifth place overall. So this then, their last lift, if you like, of the competition, and they'll be looking to go out with a bang. So both men pretty much matched on that first 100 kilogram log. 120 up for Hawkswell, no problem at all. Joe Oliver just a little bit slower on the lift. 
As they move on to the blue 140, and it's Hawkswell who's just marginally in front. Just had a bit of a trouble cleaning it up there, but he gets it up. As does Joe Oliver. 160 then for Phil Hawkswell. Rolls it up onto his chest. Oh, just struggled to get it up there. And pushes it out, looks at the referees, given the down signal, and now it's the 180, and all athletes here will be wanting to finish lifting the heaviest log. It's just a pride thing. But Joe Oliver looks like he's not going to go any further. So Phil Hawkswell, the difficult bit is, can he get it up to the top of his chest? Joe Oliver looking a bit perplexed, and you can see the difficulty. Just that extra 20 kilograms makes all the difference. And Hawkswell is not going to lift the 180 either. No, shakes his head. That's it. But he'll be very, very pleased with his performance today. Well, Paul Smith, I never thought I would say currently fourth at the beginning of the competition, but after two events where he had such a disaster, was languishing down in, what was it, 10th place or something like that, but he's really fought back like a true champion. And Max Searby, who's probably had one of the standout performances today, aside perhaps to uh, Paddy Haynes, of course, and you can't forget Andy Flynn. So Smith to the left. Easy, 100 kilograms done, as it is for Searby. CB just ahead of Paul Smith now. Both athletes moving on to the 140, and it's CB who's just got that slight edge to Smith, cleans that nicely. Paul Smith just behind him. Onto the 160. And it's CB who's first, gets it up onto the chest, has to fight it, pushes it up. Excellent pressing from him, and Paul Smith really struggled with that one. CB, I think, will fancy this 180. Smith, I'm not so sure. But we see what a difference it makes, that 20 kilogram jump up. But Sibi gets it up easy, pushes it up in 43 seconds. What a performance from him and what a way to finish England's strongest man for this young man who's been so impressive all day. And Paul Smith, yep, he looks so difficult at the 160, calls it a day. He's had enough, but he should hold his head high for fighting back the way he has done. But this man, whoa, unbelievable. And this really is where it all boils down to. Who is going to win England's strongest man? Andy Flynn, who had the lead, dropped it to Paddy Haynes, current leader. Haynes with a three-point margin, meaning Andy Flynn is going to have to beat Paddy Haynes by around four places in this event if he is to win England's strongest man. So Flynn needs a flyer and Haynes needs to avoid a disaster. Flynn gets off to a good start. The 100 done is ahead of Paddy Haynes. 120 for Flynn, and you can see the fire that he's got. Haynes, 120, much, much slower. Ooh. Oh, did he drop it on his head there, Flynn? 140 for Flynn. Haynes now, not far behind. Haynes, really struggling with this weight. Flynn now on the 160. Oh, this could be a disaster for Paddy Haynes. With the number of people who've managed to lift that 180 and the 160, Haynes needs to clear this 140 blue log. Andy Flynn, surprisingly, has hit a brick wall here. He needs to lift this, surely, if he's going to win England's strongest man. It's so tight to call because with Paddy Haynes now struggling, he is going to get really poor points in this event. But Andy Flynn, I, I would have guaranteed he could have got this way any other day of the week and the frustration setting in Haynes looking over thinking oh what's happening here have I won has Andy Flynn done enough the truth is <laughs> well he's bowed saying it's out of my hands now and I can't tell you I've got no idea who has won this competition well Searby took first place ahead of Josh Norton but neither Flynn nor Haynes are on the top of the leaderboard, which is the first time today. And look at that, Andy Flynn in ninth, Paddy Haynes down in 11th place. Both disastrous performances for both guys. Well, what does it mean on the leaderboard? Both guys looking as they try and calculate what has happened. <laughs> and they're both saying, good luck, mate. None of them know, they've got no idea who has pipped it. I've got my ideas, but let's just see what happens here. 
and Paddy Haynes literally <laughs> praying he's seen the final results and he knows he is England's strongest man and look what it means to him. Oh, it must have been so tight. Well, at the lower end of the leaderboard, Lewis Packham finished up in seventh place, Tom Place in eighth and Josh Norton in ninth. Surprising from Packham and Norton there, but look at that. It was just down to one point. Paddy Haynes takes the win, Andy Flynn in second, Max Searby in third. You know, you run that comp a hundred times, it'll go a different way. So came out on, me, on top for me today and uh, just, just blessed. Just proving to myself that I belong at this level. You know, it's been a, a crazy year to be honest, but I'm coming. There's some big shows coming in and I'm looking on good form, so couldn't be happier. Well, couldn't be happier indeed, as Paddy Haynes, an absolute surprise winner, takes first place ahead of Andy Flynn in second and Max Searby in third. From us, goodbye.